out here on the water, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for areas with like broken rock. That's gonna be kind of a key deal when you're fishing these glacier style lakes. So as I'm idling around, you know, I'm just, I'm paying attention to my, my structure scan. That's my best friend right now. It's, I gotta find a spot to fish first before I can even think about getting up there and actually catching the fish using the active target and stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna idle and nothing can replace time behind the steering wheel and just kind of idling around looking what you have out there for options bigger rocks clusters of rocks broken rock ledges steep breaks sand spots all different stuff that i'm looking for right now and of course i'm looking for fish so what i'm gonna do is just i'm idling these areas high percentage areas why not it's the dog days of summer i'm going to use high percentage areas i'm going to look at those and i'm going to try to find the fish in that area expecting i'm only going to get you know one or two two bites out of the school and that's it so I may as well go right to the meat and potatoes you know you can see here we got rock here's like a nice ledge i'm going to come back and move up and down that ledge a lot of times you'll see the fish uh, i didn't see any on that particular pass but i kind of missed the ledge I'm getting in here and I'm getting into good rocks. You can see a fish there. I mean, these aren't like the biggest boulders or nothing like you hear. It definitely doesn't have to be that. They can just be clusters of good rock like this. So I can see one fish right here off the back. Um, if you, you can see a couple fish here, right here, all hanging. Let me get a grab a screen grab of these. Just kind of hanging. It's just a good area. Like I said, it ain't like it's huge boulders, nothing like that. The ditches don't have to be extreme. It just has to be something different right there, and you can clearly see fish. So, you know, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back and I'm going to come at these fish into the wind, nice and slow and quiet, and try to catch them. And at the same time, I'll use my active target, look around, and we'll figure out what kind of bait they want to eat. Once I get within about 175 feet, that's usually when I want to kill the engine and start moving in on them. You know, I still think your best weapon is not like them know that you're there so the longer the cast you can make that fish you know are there i think will get you the bite nine times out of ten for sure see i can see them moving they're just moving around i'm just i'm just anchored down right now staying back away from from that school letting them try to reset back up you know a lot of times they know you're there you know you come in you make a couple casts and i think they know they're getting fished for so they're, they, they come in to you, you know you get up on top of them and they know but if you can pull back away from them, you'll start getting some bites. Got that when I could see that school start to follow the bait. And the big one ran in and got it. Here he is on the active target. I'm fighting him right here. <laughs> and the school's underneath. Look at that. Beauty right there. Absolute beauty of a bass. Again, you know, I, I idled it. I knew it was a good area. And now let me put this one back. Yeah. You know, that right there was a perfect example, of, you know, of just a simple bait change. I bumped into those fish. I saw the school. I could tell right away it was a good school. You know, I'm, I'm active. I idled through it. You know, I saw it on downscan. I saw that there's fish in there. and. We came back in and just kind of, you know, looked around on active target, fish for them. The Ned Rig, this particular spot, they didn't bite it. Backed off, let the school forget about me for a little bit, moved back in. I was fishing for a couple fish and all of a sudden, you know, switched to a drop shot. And all of a sudden I noticed the school come off of a, a nice little rocky drop area and just come towards the bait. So I just kind of let it dead stick. Sure enough, caught a nice one out of the school. So, you know, we'll kind of back off them again, put the anchor on the ghost troll motor. I'm going to rig up a, another drop shot here real quick, and then we'll go back at them and see if we can't get one or two more bites out of the school. Back in the day, or better times of year even, you can just drop down and catch those fish. This time of year, you know, they know they're getting fish for. It's not a giant school. They're not necessarily feeding up for winter just yet. Good time just to kind of, you know, stick a couple of them and move on. Maybe come back later in the day. Beauty. Beautiful bass. Hit a half of a little XL stick on a drop shot. Wacky rigged. And that thing's an absolute booty. You can see this here. This is kind of normal for Mille Lacs. 
you know, I think what they're doing, I see it a bunch. Could be bugs or something like that, but at the same time, I think it's also like they're hitting the rocks or something like that, trying to get those crawdads up. That is a beauty. Let's let this one go. Oh, he took it right there. <laughs> That's so much fun. Uh, big Walter. He ain't fighting like a small moth. That's pretty cool. Again, just use the active target, saw him come up on me. See the old active target drop shot ain't always small moth. Can't always tell what's coming up on you. It's a nice walleye here. I'm gonna get him put back right away. See ya. Let's go catch another one. Here we go. Here we go. Got him. There he is. I watched that one run over and grab that thing. That was awesome. Jeez. I saw that little school poke up on us. This one. That looked about like the size that they are. Some three pounders. Just using a little four inch Cinco that time. Beauty. <laughs>